Well, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for, for coming out here. Uh, this is uh, an, an event that has grown so much over the years. So this is our fifth one. And I think the first one was 10 people in a dorm room, and, and now it's just blossomed into a great event. This session is always uh, awesome for us to be able to see because it's so many people who actually produce videos and, and manage videos and track videos. And so uh, we wanted more of you guys and less of us. <laughs> so Ben and I will just speak for a little bit here on video analytics and some of the things that we've learned uh, I'm Simon Mutlu, and uh, I lead the sales team at LiveClicker. And Ben Capetti over here leads our account development team. So he's the one working with customers, and I'm the one that will try not to sell LiveClicker for the next uh, half hour here. Um, <laughs> we do really quickly want to thank our sponsor for this session, uh, which is Turn2 Networks. Um, and they are actually here in the, uh, the exhibit hall, so you can go and, and uh, talk to them if you want to. But if you haven't seen this before, this is an example of a, a product page from Vitamin Shop. What they do is they allow people to ask questions directly that can be answered by people who have bought that product before. So it's a great way to get uh, user-generated content on the product page. So turn to networks. Thank you. Um, part of the reason why we're so into analytics is because we're just a bunch of geeks. Um, we used to run a web analytics company together uh, before we started uh, in the video business um, almost six years ago. And so if you see Xavier and Walt walking around, Xavier is our CEO and Walt is our CTO. They're both Stanford math geeks. Um, they understand algorithms that Jen and I can't possibly fathom. Um, they're the smart guys that you should talk to about exactly how all this works. But uh, it's part of the reason why analytics is such a big part of our culture. And I think the other reason is because we knew that we were starting in this kind of new industry five and a half years ago where nobody had any budget for video. And even today, we talk to some really large companies with really large budgets for other things, uh, but not for video. So we always have to prove that this stuff works, and that's why we're measuring so much. So some of the data that you're going to see here, I've done some extensive analysis in the last uh, couple of weeks, where I measured 50 million video plays over the last year, and then also pulled out 20 million video plays that happened during the holiday season to try and figure out what was different during the holiday season. So we can give you some of that information today. Um, I'll publish a white paper pretty soon. and. Uh, if you guys want to either find out more about that study or read the white paper, just let me know. If any of you are going to be at ETAIL East, we're going to go into that study a little bit more um, in depth uh, over there as well. So we'll talk about five things um, about video analytics that, that we have learned or that we want everyone to kind of focus on. One thing that we notice uh, when we talk with companies, um, you know, all day long, uh, my team is talking with different companies that are thinking about getting more into video or want to, you know, um, make their video program a little bit more sophisticated, and they're measuring by a lot of the wrong metrics. There are some interesting metrics out there when it comes to video, like how many plays are we getting? How many people are liking our videos on Facebook? Uh, how many people are commenting on YouTube? Um, and there are a lot of things that we're seeing that people are doing that are just based on intuition, um, or you know, they're just doing what they think is right. And we're also seeing a lot of just uh, canned reports out in the industry, which are just, you know, Here's how many plays you got on all of your videos, which is interesting, but it's really hard to take action on some of those. And so what we recommend are some of these more intuitive reports. Um, you guys have heard, you know, in, just in the last presentation, things like dollars per play, which is a great common denominator for videos, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, things like testing which thumbnail shows up before the video plays. Um, we uh, do a lot of A-B testing uh, within the platform, but you can do that on your own as well if you use a, a, another solution for, you know, like test and target or whatever you're using. Uh, but we really recommend not trusting your intuition when it comes to a video program. It's great to try new things, and, and that's all uh, great, but you've got to measure what you're doing and figure out what's working and what's not. So let's talk about the five things. Number one, I'll show a little bit of a video here which many of you may have seen. Has anybody seen the uh, DC Shoes Gymkhana series?
And as you can see, this is basically It's a video in a series that DC Shoes has done over the years, um, where the series, cumulatively, uh, has earned more than 100 million plays on, on YouTube. This video itself has earned 52 million plays. Um, you know, we saw the Kmart Ship Your Pants, um, which got 25 million plays. That was half as popular as this one. Um, this series has been wildly popular on YouTube. And I think that's great for brand awareness, and I think that's great for top of the funnel. But can you actually prove that this video is selling any shoes? That's a much more dotted line. And that's something that I think we all need to think about. It's great to get a lot of plays on a video. And it's great to do brand awareness videos. But it's a lot harder to prove that these work. And the production value for a video like this is very, very high. It costs a lot to put a video like this together. Whereas some of our highest converting videos, and I'll show you some examples here. Uh, for example, Kitty Care is one of our clients. They're the Babies Are Us of, of England. A lot of their videos are a grandmother sitting next to a stroller, and then a grandmother sitting next to a car seat. And those videos only cost double digits or triple digits to produce. Videos like this are five digits to produce. And so you think about how many videos that work you could be producing instead of one video that might work, but it's hard to tell, if that makes sense. Um, obviously, this one has been successful in terms of popularity, though, so that's why I show it. So here's an example where we're going to show two videos next to each other. Both of them are promotional videos. Um, both of them were uh, from last year. The one on the left from Kitty Care, 72,380 plays. The one on the right from One Stop Plus, just uh, over 1,000 plays. Any idea which one earned more revenue? $18,000 more revenue uh, from the, the video on the right. So again, it's not necessarily about how popular the video is. It's about how many dollars per play you're earning. It's a great common denominator for you to be measuring. Um, you don't need live quicker to do it. It's just easier if you do. <laughs> I'll show you one of our, I, in the analysis that I was doing, I tried to find the top 25 performing videos uh, from the last year and the top 25 performing videos from the holiday season uh, amongst the 50 million plays that I was taking a look at. Here is one that has been wildly popular. You can see some of the results here on the right. Uh, only about 10,000 plays, but look at the conversion rate. After people watch this video, 32% of them bought. That's insane. Uh, we talk about dollars per play. Usually if you're in you know, seven, eight, nine dollars per play, that's great. If you're in the double digits, that's excellent. Uh, $23 every time someone hits the play button, that's incredible. And then we look at the, the full play rate here, Less than 11% of people are even finishing this video before they decide they must buy this thing right now. So let's take a look at the video. This is from 1-800-Flowers. about how simple that is. How much did it cost to put that video together? Um, and we think about all these elaborate ideas sometimes when we put together our video program. And sometimes all you have to do is answer the one question that people had when they got to the product page, which is, are they going to wilt or not? What are they going to look like after a couple days? They figured out the question that people had, and they answered it. It's one of our top performing videos of the last year. So think about the simplicity of the video program that you could be having. And we talked about dollars per play. This is what a report with dollars per play might look like, where you're measuring things like how many orders do we get, what were the conversion rate for each video. Um, again, you've got to tie it all, especially when you're running a video commerce program, you've got to tie it to revenue. That's number one. Number two. Are you doing number two? There I am. <laughs> um, I'll let Ben speak at some point here. Um, 
So we also look at a lot of companies that uh, will say, yeah, this video must be working because it's got so many Facebook likes. I mean, this video must be working because so many people on YouTube gave it the thumbs up instead of the thumbs down, right? Um, or there was a really funny comment on YouTube, which uh, got people to watch it too. Um, and all those things are great. They're soft metrics. Um, but one thing that we really recommend is getting people to offer direct feedback about the video, because sometimes we don't know what's working and what's not working in that video unless we ask people directly. Um, so we look at you know, videos that have a high viewer rating or a low viewer rating, but we sometimes don't know why. And so there's a feedback button which we offer on our video player, um, but it's something that you could do through the comments underneath your videos, regardless of which video uh, platform you use, where it asks directly a very simple question, what do you guys think of this video? And one example that I'll show here um, is a video that has a basic question that you may not think about as a video producer. Go ahead and watch this one here. figure out one of the basic questions that people watching that video might have, especially if you're a parent? How loud is this thing before I take it into my home and let my kids play with it? One of the very basic questions that we get a lot of times on toys, um, Brookstone gets it a lot on a, a few things. Um, you know, ben was telling me they had an alarm clock mm -hmm. that they were selling where they did not let you hear how the alarm clock sounded in the first take of that video. Using the viewer feedback, feature, they found a lot of parents wanted to know, a lot of people wanted to know, how loud is this thing? What does it sound like? And so they had to redo the video to make sure that people could hear it. Conversion rates, way up. Uh, this video itself has earned $135,000 in sales um, because you do let people hear and you do get to see what it looks like. And you also have the scale, which is a really important thing in a lot of videos that we find. Um, understanding how tall is this person that's in the video, but, you know, as, as compared to this person, how big is this helicopter? Um, so that's something that they have in this video as well as scale. Go ahead. All right. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I think the, the, the big question we're all trying to answer is, uh, you know, do you want to be cool or do you want to be effective? Um, and I think a lot of that comes back to testing. Um, we've done a lot of, you know, talking about intuition. Um, and we've seen over and over and over again that our intuition is often wrong. Um, so one of the things that we do at LiveClicker, and, and uh, I'm glad that, that Val's in the room from uh, Advance, um, is talking about this. Um, something like the first image that you see on a video is crucially important. Why? It's the window into what this content is all about. So if we look at these, let's just do a, a quick straw poll here. Uh, this, is, this is sort of our A-B testing, and LiveClicker does it, I think, particularly well, but I think it's important regardless of where you're, you're uh, looking at the video. Which of these, so raise your hand if you think the one on your left is the more effective first image. Okay, what about the right? All right, pretty evenly split. All right, so let's take a look. All right, 2.8% or 2.89% click through. 3.82, that's the winner. Um, actually, another piece of this was something that, that we did a couple, I think it was a couple years ago. Uh, we even went a step further. And, you know, so we're looking right now at two guys explaining something versus a product itself. Um, and one of the interesting sort of colloquial or uh, 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 adages that we put together was that even if you put the one on the right with human hands touching it, uh, that click through went, uh, actually went up from there. Why? Because people wanted to see it in motion. They wanted to see how, you know, sort of a how-to video uh, of how to put this into use. Um, so I think it's incredibly important um, to, to look at, you know, whatever your video is and make sure you, you think through uh, and methodically test what A-B testing is all about. Um, so for this one, we'll kind of do the same thing. And I'm, we went with O'Reilly this time. Um, we'll do a quick straw poll. Um, the one on the left, raise your hand. One on the right, 
3.47, 5.57. So completely different thing. One on the left. Let's take a look at the, that first image. What are we looking at here? Does anyone know what we're looking at? It's pretty, it's pretty vague. Um, but on the one on the right, we actually have a brand name there. We have a little bit more of a descriptive uh, first image. So um, taking a look at that. Now, one of the things that we do um, is methodically go through. So if you would say, for instance, all right, well, let's show a product in motion versus someone uh, smiling, for instance, or someone actually with hands on the product, or um, brand names, et cetera, et cetera. Skin Store is one of my favorite uh, stories about this. We thought, their, um, uh, their thought was, all right, well, I think all of our first images should be the product itself. And you said, all right, well, that seems pretty reasonable. So we tested that versus the product in motion. Now, what do people go to Skin Store for? Everyone in the, in the Live Clicker class heard me talk about this. Um, yesterday, but you go there to sort of, you know, it's, it's a self-improvement, really at its basic, it's a self-improvement site. So we tested that versus uh, the product in motion. Then what we tested was, all right, maybe we should show a person in that first, that first image. Um, and what wound up winning is the product not even close to the, the first image. They wanted to see someone smiling. Um, so even on a product page, that's what they wanted to see. It out outperformed uh, the image of the, uh, the product three to one, um, which is pretty incredible. If you think about that, three to one, in terms of what Robert said in the last presentation, so think about, sort, or the, the 1-800 flowers example, $13 a play, three to one. If you think about that, right, and you say, all right, well, I'm getting 90,000 plays a month, that starts to add up over time. These are things you really have to pay attention to. So going by your intuition, you're leaving money on the table. Um, and I think that's an incredibly important thing that's really what we're trying to get across here is don't trust your intuition. Always say, so what, and how does this, uh, this convert a little bit better? For this one, let's do again on the left. What do we think? Almost identical, right? We have both of these are in motion. They both show the product itself. One just shows someone a little bit more, a little up the legs a few. So the one on the left, raise your hand. Okay. One's on the left, keep, to keep losing. Maybe I should stop doing this. One on the right. All right. You're wrong. <laughs> so really, what they wanted to see was more of the product itself. Uh, now this changes brand to brand. This is not a universal lesson that we can learn. This is all about what you sell, how you're differentiating yourself. So um, for instance, blinds and online shoes will sell things very differently. Things will be you know, effective on one site that may not be effective on another site. It's not a one size fits all type thing. So when you're looking at and evaluating your own video program, make sure you're taking into sort of account, yes, general lessons, but you really want to make sure you're testing for your own specific brand. All right, so a couple of these things. Just sort of general uh, video uh, statistics here. Uh, $1.2 million uh, driven by videos. 87% uh, of those viewers are in the U.S. 28.4 second average play, 4.3% conversion. Um, what would you do? differently if you saw these. They're very sort of general metrics, right? So would you hire someone new? Would you change your strategy in any way? Essentially what we're trying to tell you is don't go with general metrics. Don't lump videos together. Your video program isn't just one sort of set of videos. It, it, they're there for a specific purpose. So you have product page videos, you have category page videos, you may have brand videos, you may have UGC. If you have a diverse video program, something like viewer vid video, or video visitor rate isn't going to tell you a whole lot. Um, you want to know why those things work. Um, something like video view rate, that's okay, but does it really, you know, when you think about that next week, here are the videos I think I'm going to shoot, here are the videos I'm going to produce, am I going to hire a producer, am I, am I going to outsource it? You need something that tells you a little bit more about what your video program is like. So if we think about this one for a second, um, so what works? Well, we talked to uh, Robert from EMS said, you know, one of his highest performing videos was three and a half minutes long. That's not usually the case, but you know, through extensive testing, you really want to make sure you, you look at that. One of the things within LiveClicker, and, and we don't want to turn this into a LiveClicker commercial, but um, one of these things is the, the, the ability to sort of test one versus the other. So in general, do long, longer videos perform better than shorter videos? What we found in, this, in the larger study was that 
Um, videos between 30 and 60 seconds were the best. Okay, well that's a huge segment. Are they the best for you though? Well, if you're selling electronics, maybe they're not. If you're selling something more like a shoe, maybe they are. What else? Online shoes is one of my favorite ones. Uh, Tom's, I think, still in the room. Um, male presenters versus female, pre female presenters. So if we're selling shoes to men, who do they want to see explained in the product? That's something to test. Um, again, going back to this idea of what if, what if a male presenter outperforms a female presenter three to one or vice versa? That's something you really, really want to know because if you don't, you're leaving money on the table. You're not converting as well as you possibly could. Product demos versus educational how-tos. Which are performing better? The other thing to start testing is where would you put those particular videos? A how-to on a product page may sell fantastically. A brand video on a product page may tank your conversion rate. You always want to take into account where your audience is, what they're doing on the page, and then be able to measure that going forward. So vendor supplied videos, self-produced videos, agency produced videos. With a small set, you can actually say, all right, this is what's working for me, this is what's not working for me. Uh, so for this one, we have you know, segment one versus segment two. And this is, I think the screenshot itself is zero to 30 seconds versus 30 to 60 seconds. You can kind of see that down there. But this sort of say A, B testing over and over and over again, um, where you really come up with the right answer um, and figure out what works for your program is, is the way to go. Okay. So I think this is the ad hoc. I'm going to hand it right back over to Simon here. And then we'll take some Q&A. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you got it. So the last point that we uh, are making here, and, and part of this is uh, from the web analytics days, uh, and, and part of this is from the, the video analytics days, it's uh, don't start with a report where the answer is sitting there in front of you. Start with a question, and then have a reporting engine that'll allow you to get to the answer from whatever the question is. So, you know, like Ben alluded to earlier, are our male presenters getting any different conversion rates than our female presenters? That's a question. And then you want to be able to have an analytic solution that'll help you get to that answer. Um, but if you get in this habit of just looking at these canned reports all the time, um, then what ends up happening is you get placated. You're like, well, the number kind of went up a little bit, so that's good. And the number kind of went down a little bit, and that's bad. Uh, it doesn't help you actually do any actionable uh, changes to your, to your program. So it's one thing that we recommend. This is an example of an ad hoc report uh, where you can pull anything by anything by anything, basically. Um, so it's like using Omniture Core Metrics or whatever for your video program. And this is a part of Live Clicker, but um, you know, I can show you more if, if you come by the table a little bit later. In the uh, study that we'll be releasing here pretty soon, these are some of the findings uh, that we found. Um, just some little tidbits, I'll let you read through it. Things like during the holiday season, uh, over the course of the 20 million video plays, uh, they were earning about $2.47 more per video play than they did the rest of the year. Um, the attention span per video was a little bit shorter, so the average person was watching about 26 seconds per video, whereas uh, outside of the holiday season they were willing to watch more. Um, things like that. Conversion rate was about 24 to 25% higher during the holiday season, which makes sense. People are shopping with more of a purpose during the holiday season. Um, but just some of the things that we learned in, in that study. I'll just leave that slide up for, or actually, you know, one more here. Anybody have any analytics questions that are uh, easy enough for me to answer or tough enough for Ben to answer? <laughs> Sure. Um, so attribution is this huge can of worms, as you guys all know, right? Um, we're trying to measure all the different iterations. So one of them is uh, from a video play, we're measuring for the next 30 days um, on the con order confirmation page, basically. We're measuring um, how much revenue came in from that person after watching a video. Um, and the, the converse, so when someone buys something, what was the last video that they watched? We're also measuring all the different videos that were watched along the way um, so that you can figure out how you, you want to do attribution on your side. Um, and the last thing that we're measuring is which product did they buy based on which video that they watched. Um, but as you can see, it, it's this huge can of worms with lots of data. So, uh, you know, from my last 10 years of being in, in the analytics world, I always recommend that um, every company figure out how they want to do attribution and then stick to it so that you can figure out the ups and downs from there. 
but you might measure attribution differently than another company. And so that's why we try to give you the tools to interpret the way that you need to. We did a project fairly recently. Um, you'll see my intern, Spencer, over here. Uh, I had him go through um, uh, OSP Group, which is a, a, an apparel company. And one of the things that we looked at specifically was not only the concept of the one-to-one -one relationship, which is sort of, I watched this video, I, I purchased the product that was featured in that video, but also the concept of influencing videos, which blew my mind. Um, if you looked at folks who may have just watched a whole stream of videos, uh, and then purchased a product that was seemingly unrelated, but you really dug into the videos that they watched, a lot of times you would see things like they would, they would watch a video for a completely, or a competing product. Um, and what that tells me is if they're watching a video for a competing product and then they buy the other product, they know what they don't want. Well, that's just as valuable inf inf a piece of information as if they're watching that direct uh, product video. Uh, what, you, what you wind up having is not only do you get a, a great conversion for that particular product, you're much less likely to get a return on the product that they bought. They know exactly what they don't want. Um, it also may be something where they've watched um, three separate videos for that category or maybe that brand and then they went on and bought something, maybe not featured in the video, but they went and bought you know, a Comfort View shoe after watching four Comfort View videos. Those are influencing videos, and I think that's incredibly important um, when we're looking at what works with video, not just that very simplistic one-to-one, -one, did they buy the product of in, the, in the video that they watched the video about. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I wonder why you decided to use I think it's sure. I think it's two different things, though, right? So if you think about in terms of uh, a viral video that you're really just trying to get out there, um, is that video? Are you trying to make that video convert, right? So dollars per play is one thing. Um, where if you think about, um, all right, so you know you get a hundred million views on YouTube, um, and how that works, right? And getting people back. Um, YouTube videos won't actually. You know, I'm trying to get myself out of this one. Uh, <laughs> so as far as the dollars per play goes, you, know, you want to be able to get, essentially get an ROI. It's the easiest equation that there is for, for overall, overall ROI instead of the sort of lump sum. Um, dollar per play also allows you to sort of break down the individual video and see sort of what, what's working within that video itself. So you can say, you know, zero to 30 seconds earns this many dollars per play versus sort of 30 to 60 seconds uh, and go that direction. When in, you think of, oh, go ahead. In all fairness, we're measuring both. So, you mm -hmm. know, people can see total revenue per or conversion rate or whatever they want to see per, per video. Um, the reason why dollars per play is interesting in my mind is because each product has its own popularity or lack of popularity or the SEO on the product page could be a factor or there are all kinds of reasons why uh, a particular video might not get as many plays but might still be really successful uh, from a video perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, we see a lot of customers that'll say, hey, you know, this product just is really niche and, you know, only 5,000 people watched that video this year, but the video is still performing well. Other questions? No other questions about analytics? Does that mean we answered all of your questions or we bored you all so much that you just want to take a break? <laughs> um, so we're supposed to remind you to fill out your uh, feedback forms right now. Um, and then Ben and I will hang out for a little bit in case you guys have any questions that you want to come up about. Uh, otherwise, I'll hang out at the live quicker table downstairs. Mm -hmm. You can come ask me questions as well. Yes? Sure. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.